This is Twit. Google has decided they are going to offload Google domains. I don't know why I'm running this up top, except it's pissing me off. Uh, Google Domains, which was actually a very good way to buy a domain name. They had 300 TLDs. It wasn't the cheapest, but it was certainly affordable. And now they're sell they sold it to Squarespace. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, th there's a funny account called like Killed by Google, and all it does is yeah. track different products that Google kills off. And I I'm pretty sure when this happened, they had the best day ever. They're like, yes, I was right. Um I, I think the pitch here, Leo, is focus, but I mean, it, it seems pretty short-sighted to kill off all the things that built consumer surplus at the company. Nine years long. Uh, it, I mean, look, we have a sponsor, Hover, which is a great domain registrar, and that's what I use. That's who I use. Yeah, it's Every good. Week. It's not like there's that's a right. shortage of good domain registrars, but I have to feel for all the people who registered their domain at Google Domains that is soon going to be owned by Squarespace. And I'd be so annoyed. I would be so annoyed. Uh, there will be a transition yeah. period. Squarespace takes it all over. Um, 10 million domains hosted on Google Domains. Millions of customers. Google Sheesh. said, we're sharpening our focus. Sharpening their knives. And this is right after, by the way, Google announced the .zip TLT, which was a security nightmare. <laughs> so this was like their last hurrah. Okay, we're going to introduce a TLD that could really hack your computer, and then we're going to sell the business. <laughs> Goodbye. And MOV, too. Dot MOV, MOV, which also is like, yeah. what, you, what it, what? Oh. Why? Steve Gibson. Why don't you just buy dot PDF? Yeah, like, there I you just, go. It's like, just, I don't, <laughs> like, oh, yes, you can find me at Ashley Esqueda dot PDF. Like, what? Oh, a, my God. <laughs> I mean, is that the only way it could have been worse is if they had also... Well, that zip's pretty Offered bad PDF. because, in fact, Steve covered this on the security now last week. You know, you put a link on a in an email or a website that's, you know, download dot zip or whatever. It goes to a website, downloads in the background, a malicious file. I mean, it's a terrible idea. Come see our website. <laughs> well, <laughs> Squarespace now wants dot zip and dot move as, as well. Take my advice, Squarespace. Uh, discontinue those immediately. <laughs> I don't know how. What is, is Google feels like it's shredding before our very eyes. No, like, this is like pretty classic Google stuff. I mean, they've been they've been launching initiatives oh, yeah. and then shutting them down since time immemorial. Yeah, look at them all. Killed I'd by be Google. concerned if they weren't killing things. That's <laughs> when I get scared for Google when there's nothing left to take. Stadia, um, I felt is... bad for, but you know, I yeah. understood that I wasn't yeah. going wasn't going anywhere. Good technology. Just I think it I think that it was just so ambitious they wanted to make their own like kind of console platform. And I'd like they should have just sold it. They should have licensed the technology because that's I mean, that's where it is. Maybe they tried right. to and Squarespace didn't want it. I don't know. Oh, probably. <laughs> probably right. <laughs> Man. Squarespace only has so much money, guys. Yeah. Come on. I can't believe True, they bought yeah. Google Domains. Like, that was the best you could do. I mean, look, nothing wrong with Squarespace, but they're uh, they're a web design, you know, website company. They're yeah. Not... And incidentally, yeah. for years, I've said to people, do not get your domain from the same people who do your, do your website. Yeah, that's convenient, right. but it's a bad idea. You should have, right. have it somewhere else, like Hover. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, and didn't, wasn't there a time where like you couldn't, uh, which I'm, I mean, maybe I'm mixing up services, but there was a point where you couldn't buy, you couldn't import a domain to Squarespace. Like you had to buy it oh, through maybe. Squarespace. I wouldn't be surprised. If you wanted to build a site, like yeah. it was like, if you wanted to use a domain, you had to do it through them, maybe. which means if you had already registered a website, forget you, it. Forget it. Like it just didn't. Well, yeah. that was, I'm sure they changed that. That's a bad idea. Um, or if they haven't already, now they can. There is a larger question, though. I mean, yes, of course, Google should kill stuff that doesn't make money or whatever. Every company should do that. But at some point, doesn't it hurt you? Like people are, are you know, and then now Google comes up with some shiny new thing. I'm going to be, I'm really going to think twice before I adopt anything Google comes up with, right? Oh, I'll adopt nothing that they come up with. I mean, I, yeah, I don't think I don't, they have the follow through. Yeah, I mean, I mean think Gmail about they, is like one of the only things I use and drive. That's like it. Yeah, but think about how Google really did well in the past. They launched Google search, which was amazing. 
Yep. Very ad light. They made a bunch of money. Enormous amounts of consumer surplus there. Uh, Gmail came out. Have a gigabyte of storage. Change the way we think about the internet. They made Chrome. Here's a lightweight browser that's super fast. And since then, they have initiated, to use Corey's language, search. Gmail has yes. stagnated to the point of yes. being fetid. And uh, everything else they've done has slowly kind of decayed. I mean, it, it's a company that appears to be more run by consultants than technologists. And uh, it answers to Wall Street more than users. And I think that it just shows top to bottom. It's a disappointment, but... Um, Nothing it's kind of built really became big enough. It's kind so. of a disease that's uh, uh, mm -hmm. everywhere now, endemic yeah. in the technology business. It's just less. It's so much less about users, and it's more about investors, right? It's just shareholders, and that's it. Like that's really the only thing. You know, it's so like there a lot of a lot of companies feel like right now that you know, and over time, like the last few years especially, it just feels like there is such a um, devaluation of the user experience in favor of like just whatever boosts shareholder income. I mean, even in and this is not even like exclusive to tech. This is like happening in Hollywood as well with the writer strike and everything that's going on there, and um, you know these really big corporations buying up uh, studios and stuff and and deciding that you know oh well we're we're gonna um, issue creatives uh, in favor of our shareholders and it's like oh well, we're just gonna take a big tax write off on you know space ghost was was pu fully pulled off of max this this last week oh, like space ghost kidding. coast to coast fully pulled off max and it's like because they don't want to pay royalties on it and they just want to take a big write off on it and so it's like i assume that they say okay well this is a show that like you know probably not a ton of people rewatch but also it's enough that you know just the cost of them keeping it online is is enough that, you know, and it's an older show, so probably the residuals are a little bit better. And so it's like to keep that, you know, in place, it's like it didn't make sense for shareholders, but not for people who are using the service. So it that is a real bummer. And it's just really prevalent right now. It does feel like it's everywhere. Here's uh, I think part of the reason why that's happening is because we're pretty far after the last technology generation shift. Yeah. Right? That's Whenever right. there's mm -hmm. a new platform or a new major method of building stuff, um, new stuff comes out, it really changes the game, makes a lot of money, and it hasn't been so finely optimized for net income that there's a lot of consumer surplus left. And then, you know, this far into the last yeah, cycle. Watch as open AI speed runs the inshitification cycle. Because yes. they're, they're going to go right through it. Let me read you. This is from Corey's post, TikToks and shitification. This is how platforms die. First, they are good to their users. Reddit, Google. Then they abuse their users to make things better for their business customers. Finally, they abuse those business customers to claw back all the value from themselves. Then they die. <laughs> I call this perfect. All. That's a pretty perfect uh, life cycle. Yeah. That's a pretty perfect life cycle image. He says, I call this shitification, and it is a seemingly inevitable consequence arising from the combination of the ease of changing how a platform allocates value combined with the nature of a two sided market where a platform sits between buyers and sellers. In the case of Reddit, the readers in the you posters holding each hostage to the other raking off an ever larger share of share of the value that passes between them happened at tiktok happened at twitter it's happening at reddit he uses amazon it's amazon his, his he uses amazon example. is a great example yeah. great example when a platform starts it needs users so it makes itself valuable to users often selling below cost right think of amazon for many years it operated at a loss using its access to the capital markets to subsidize everything you bought they kept they kept going back to raise more money. And when, when VC said no more money, they started borrowing. It sold goods below cost and shipped them below cost. It operated a clean and useful search. If you search for a product, Amazon tried its damnness to put it at the top of the search results. That was a hell of a good deal for Amazon customers, Corey writes. Lots of us piled in and lots of brick and mortar retailers withered and died, making it hard to go elsewhere. But then that tempted in lots of business customers, marketplace sellers who turned Amazon into the everything store to promise from the beginning. As these sellers piled in, Amazon shifted to subsidizing suppliers. Kindle and Audible creators got generous packages. Marketplace sellers reached huge audiences. Amazon took low commissions for them. Made it harder for shoppers to find anything anywhere except Amazon. <laughs> but, but it also meant more sellers had to be on Amazon. 
That's when Amazon started to harvest the surplus from its business customers and send it to Amazon shareholders. Today, marketplace sellers are handling or handing 45% of the sale price to Amazon in fees. 45%. Yeah. The company's $31 billion advertising program, I put that in scare quotes, is really a payola scheme that pits sellers against each other. Surpluses are first directed to users, then once they're locked in, surpluses go to suppliers, then once they're locked in, the surplus is handed to shareholders, and the platform That's becomes it. a useless pile of poop. Yeah. It's Can effectively the dentist system from It's Always Sunny, but for apps. Tell me like, that because I, I don't see, I don't watch that show. Okay. So in It's Always Sunny, in the fifth season, there is this like very classic famous episode called The Dentist. Uh, it's... <laughs> The dentist system. I will watch this. Okay. Uh, introduces this this introduces this thing called the dentist system, and Dennis in It's Always Sunny. If you're not familiar with his character, is basically a sociopath and uh, borderline psychopath. There are there's a subreddit about it, I'm sure. Um, and so the dentist system is his system to um, to get women to sleep with him. And so he's like, the dentist system is D, demonstrate value. Yeah. E, engage physically. Yeah. N, nurture dependence. N, neglect emotionally. <laughs> then inspire hope. And then separate entirely. And it's like, every time I think about technology, I'm like, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Literally inspired this somehow. Like, I don't know how it happened, but the dentist system predicted our current situation. Oh my God. How it's many? The I've system. been using that system for years. I didn't the even know there was system. a name. Yeah. Oh, it's Brilliant. the dentist system. It's from 2009. Like, it's, this it. is an episode that aired a long time. It's such a funny, it. God, this show is so funny. Um, is this but still yeah, good? it's the dentist system. They just, what is it? It's ninth, still ninth, ninth, good. How, How is seasons? it still good? Yeah. It's still good. There are some, there are some still, like, they still manage to have at least one, like, absolute banger episode every season that is just, like, a cl instant classic. Fif and I think 15 it, years they've been doing this. It's amazing. Long time, yeah. and they've had how many seasons? I 16. like it's 16, 16 seasons. seasons. I mean, it's yeah. just and it's a timeless show. That's that's the great thing about it. It's like it's not you and know, it's watch, a timeless show because Max will kill it as soon as uh, they're not making any money on it, right? Why FX, do we have to call yeah. it Max? <laughs> Ugh, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I can't. Where does it FX board, ends up it? on Hulu? But isn't Hulu? About to be well, sold. Hulu's gonna, yeah, Hulu's gonna spin to down now because Disney, right? Because Disney is like, uh, they're, I think it's Comcast is selling, selling its last. It, they they held like ten percent, and then they're finally letting that go. And, and then at Disney that point, what Disney it. Plus and and Hulu become the same, or? Yeah, they're they'll make one big app, and I'm sure. Um, because the thing is, is like, so it doesn't suit them to really have two separate apps like that, especially now yeah. that they've implemented parental controls and right. R-rated content on Disney Plus, which for a while they didn't. They were, there were, you know, separation of adults and kids content, kids content. But now it's, they're, they're like, well, now we have, you know, some adult content. You have gates and, you know, parental controls and stuff. So now we're just going to merge them. What would they call it? Would they call it, they should, since there's Max, they should call it Mini. <laughs> Mini. Mini, like Mini Mouse. Sure With Disney's the mini ears. Should have the ears and yeah, the Disney bow. Mini. Like right there. Yeah. Mini. Yeah. Disney Mini. <laughs> you can either subscribe to Mini or Max. Or Max. Which one? Get the one you like. It's a bad, this streaming thing That's is another like example that. of insuretification, I think. It's just. It's a mess. It's a mess. Do you want to hear about the latest news happening in the tech world from the people who write the article, sometimes from the people who are actually making the news? Well, we got a show for you here at twit.tv. It's called Tech News Weekly. Me, Jason Howell, and my co-host, Micah Sargent, we talk with some amazing people each and every Thursday on Tech News Weekly. And we share a little bit of our own insights in each of us bringing a story of the week. That's at twit.tv slash TNW. Subscribe right now.